The Kraft Food Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's Saturday morning, and that means a late breakfast in the Gildersleeve household. The great man has consumed a hearty meal, topped off by three waffles. He daintily pats his lips with his napkin, loosens his belt a notch, and leans contentedly back in his chair. <sighs> oh, do you want that last waffle? Uh, no, you can have it, my boy. Thanks. Leroy, don't stab at it. You're not harpooning a whale, you know. Okay. Uncle, aren't you going to the office this morning? Oh, well, Marjorie, not much use going down for a half day. Besides, I have a few things to do. Get my suit pressed, shoes shine. Mm-hmm, that's right. You do have a date with Adeline Fairchild this afternoon, don't you? Well, it's not exactly a date. She's just having me over for tea. Tea? My, how elegant. Yeah. <laughs> just an old southern custom, I guess. <laughs> Mailman! Okay. Hey, Al, can I have a quarter to go to the movies this afternoon? Yeah, we'll see. They got a swell western with Tex Gillum, the singing cowboy. I've heard of him. He sings through his nose. Can I go? I suppose so. Any mail for me, Bertie? Yes, but there's one letter for you. Looks like them Easter seals you get every year. Oh, yes. Well, mustn't forget to send him a check. Everyone ought to buy Easter seals. Wonderful way to help all those children who need it. Yes, it sure is. Is there any more mail, Bertie? Well, there's one more letter, but it's not for you, Miss Gilsey. Is it for me? No, it's just one, and that's for Leroy. Leroy? Hey. <laughs> that's right. Here you are, Leroy. Gee, thanks. I don't know who it's from, but it sure smells nice. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm, it's addressed to Master Leroy Forrest. Oh, uh, who's it from, Leroy? Gee, I don't know. Who we'll open it? Oh. Let me see it. No, you can't. Marjorie, we don't read other people's mail. What does it say, Leroy? <laughs> mm, nothing, Uncle. What is it, my boy? You can tell your old uncle. Well, it's just an invitation to an old party next week. Well, that's wonderful. Who's giving the party? Oh, a new girl at school. Helen Moore. She's a pest. Now, Leroy, I'll bet she's a very nice little girl. She's a pest. She's always hanging around during recess trying to talk to me. She's probably just trying to get acquainted. Who wants to get acquainted with girls? No. Girls are pests. But, Leroy, that party sounds like a lot of fun, and I'm sure you'll have a good time. I'm not going to a old party. What? Who wants to play a lot of sissy games? Blind man above, pin the tail on the donkey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, my boy. I used to enjoy playing games when I was a boy. Especially post office. <laughs> and then I don't want to dance. I'll have to go gliding around the floor with some giggling little twerf. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. my goodness. I won't go. Now look here, Leroy. It's no use, Uncle. He's hopeless. I'll handle this, my dear. Leroy, I think it's time you change your attitude about these things. Acquired a few social graces. Um, Going to parties is good for you. Teaches you to get along with people. Don't want to grow up to be a hermit and live off in a cave somewhere. I'd rather live in a cave and go out with girls. Ye gods. <laughs> Just because you like girls doesn't mean I have to. Lero. <laughs> You're going to that party. I don't want to go. Well, you are, and I don't want any silly arguments. I'll go off and live in a cave. Leroy, you may go to your cave. I mean, go to your room. <laughs> and you'll stay there all afternoon. But you said... Well, you're not going. By George's time, you learned a little discipline. Oh, Uncle, you don't have to be so... Never mind. Go on, young man. Up to your room. March. Uncle Walter, let me the game. Let's Children. <laughs> Good morning, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gillis. 
see him? <laughs> what can I do? My, if you don't mind my saying so, you look a little down in the mouth. Oh, well, I had a little trouble with Leroy this morning. You know, PV, raising children is a trial sometimes. Yes, I guess it is. Of course, I wouldn't know. All Mrs. Peavy and I ever raised is a parrot. <laughs> Polly has given us a lot of joy, though. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget how proud we were when she first learned to talk. Okay, Peavy. Her first words were, Polly wants a cracker. Mm-hmm. Peavy, Leroy is no parrot. No, I guess he isn't. Uh, what kind of trouble have you been having with him, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, some little girl invited him to a party, and he refuses to go. I guess I was a little harsh with him. But he exasperates me, P.V. He's so stubborn. Well, maybe Leroy is just a little shy about girls. Leroy shy? Well, most little fellows are. I know I was. First party I went to, I was so shy I hid in the broom closet all afternoon. <laughs> I just came out when they served the ice cream. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse my saying so, Peavy, you were probably an odd little boy. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wasn't odd at all. Peavy, I didn't mean... I was a real red-blooded American boy. I know, I I was... used to play kick to can, catch pollywogs, and collect McKinley buttons. I didn't I, say that. I was a regular harem scum. Oh, all right. Uh, I'll never forget the time I, I sneaked out behind the barn and I ate a whole package of chocolate cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> And I didn't even get sick. For heaven's sake, Peavy. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just don't think you understand children very well. I don't? What do you think I was when I was young? Probably a fat little boy. Oh! <laughs> now, look here, Peavy. I don't need any advice from you. Well, in that case, I won't give you any. Well, don't. Well, I won't. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Yes, Bertie. Where is everybody? Well, Marjorie went out a little while ago. And Leroy's up in his room. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's still up there. Yeah. I know, Bertie. That's where he is. All by himself. Up in his room. Okay, Bertie. Been up there all morning. <laughs> up in his room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, haven't looked at the paper yet. <laughs> Peavy, what does he know about raising children? He and his parrot. Guess I know how to bring up my own nephew. All he needs is a little discipline. Leroy, shy. He's just stubborn, that's all. Why should any boy be afraid of girls? I wasn't. At least I don't think I was. <laughs> Let me see. Remember the time my father wanted me to go to dancing school? He called me into his study. I can still see him standing there, angrily fingering his gold watch chain. Rock Morton? Yes, Papa? I thought I told you to report to Miss Thorpe's dancing school this afternoon. I did, Papa. <laughs> But I looked in, and then I ran away. Jumping Jehoshaphat ran away? (laughs) What on earth for? Well, there were girls in there. (laughs) Of course there were girls. What did you expect to see? Water buffaloes? (laughs) Well, Papa, when they saw me, they started to giggle. And one of the girls said, Look, here comes Fatty Britches. (laughs) Ye gods and little minnows. And blow your nose. Young man, you're going back to dancing school tomorrow. I won't go, Papa. I won't go. Very well, Throckmorton, if you insist on being stubborn, you stay here in my study until you change your mind. (laughs) He'll call me Fatty Britches. Why doesn't Papa understand? Why doesn't Papa understand? Why doesn't he... Uh, that was a long time ago. Funny how you forget those things. 
I remember now how unhappy I was that day. Poor little Leroy. Listening to the radio, I'll bet. No. Huh? Been reading your little comic books? No. What have you been doing? Just sitting here. Huh? <laughs> sitting on the bed, eh? Well, at least it's soft and comfortable. <laughs> Mind if I just sit down here next to you? No. If you want to. Uh huh. Thank you. Well, nice and comfortable. A little squeaky. <laughs> well, what have you been doing? I mean, <laughs> Leroy? Yeah? Yeah. I'd like to have a little talk with you, my boy. Okay. Uh, I'm afraid I wasn't very understanding this morning, Leroy. That's all right. Grown-ups forget a lot of things sometimes. You know, a long time ago, I was a little boy, just like you. Weren't you fatter? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yes, I guess I was a little, maybe. <laughs> you know, when I was your age, I felt the same way about girls as you do, Leroy. I was a little afraid of them. Oh, who's afraid of girls? I just don't like them, that's all. Giggling at you all the time. That's all right, I understand, my boy. Leroy, maybe I should explain a few things about girls. Uh, girls, my boy, are... Well, they're... Uh, girls are... Uh... <clears throat> Well, anyway, you'll learn to like him when you grow older. <laughs> I did. You sure did, Unc. Yeah. <laughs> well, girls aren't so bad when you get to know them, Leroy. Anyway, I have a little plan. A plan? Yeah. Now, you call this little girl, this Helen Moore, and invite her over for a little visit this afternoon. What? Now, let me finish, Leroy. You'll get better acquainted that way than you won't mind going to her party. Oh, for corn's sake. Now, it won't be so bad. I'll stay with you all the time. In fact... I'll drive you over to get her. But, Uncle, I thought you had a date this afternoon. Well, I do, but uh, well, I'll be a little late. I'll make that sacrifice for you, my boy. Oh, uh... I'm doing this for you, Leroy. I just want to help you. Of course, it's up to you. I don't want to force it on you. If you don't want to call her, you don't have to. Okay, then I won't. Yes, you will. You'll call her right now. <laughs> <laughs> and blow your nose. <laughs> We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, I met Gildy's niece, Marjorie, coming home from school the other day. Her arms were loaded with books, so I said, Is that homework for tonight, Marjorie? Yep, got an exam in home economics. Home economics. Say, did you know that parquet margarine is economical? Why, parquet actually costs less today than it did a year ago. Mr. Walt, I doubt that parquet will come up in the exam. Well, it should. Everyone should learn about delicious parquet margarine. It's made by Kraft. It's made from only the choice products of American farms. Tasty parquet is really... But I know how good parquet is. We always use it at home. Well, then you know parquet is the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. That smooth, rich, fresh flavor makes it a favorite in millions of homes. This exam is mostly concerned with nourishment and diet and vitamins. Vitamins. Marjorie, there are 15,000 units of essential vitamin A in every pound of parquet. Appetizing, wholesome parquet is just as nourishing as it is delicious. Be sure to try it. Millions of women have learned that parquet margarine is a perfect spread. It tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. And now back to the great Gildersleeve. Well, this is not Leroy's lucky day. His little admirer, Helen Moore, eagerly accepted his invitation to be his guest for the afternoon. At the moment, Leroy is reluctantly dressing up for the occasion under the supervision of the great man himself. Straighten out your tie, Leroy. It's almost under your ear. Okay. Now, turn around. Let me look at you. That suit's getting a little tight as... What's that bulge in your coat pocket? Huh? Come here. Let me see what you got in there. Eight. A slingshot. 
rusty nails. An old doorknob. Oh, my goodness. You're a traveling junk shop. I'm saving those things. Well, don't save them in your Sunday suit, Leroy. Let's have a final inspection here. Leroy, when did you get a haircut last? Well, I got one around Christmas. Christmas? <laughs> what year, may I ask? <laughs> you can't call for a girl with your hair looking like that. Oh, boy, then I don't have to go. Just a minute. You're not getting out of it that easy. Come on, young man. We'll make a detour at the barbershop. And let's hurry. I've got a date, too, you know. <laughs> Hello, Floyd. Well, Leroy. Hello, Mr. Munson. Leroy would like to have his hair cut, Floyd. Sure. Hop right up in the chair, Leroy. Guess I better crank the chair up a little. There we are. <laughs> Sit down. Take a load off your feet, Commish. All right, Floyd, but make it snappy. We're in a hurry. Okay. How have you been, Leroy? Keeping out of mischief? Yeah, I guess so. That's good. Going out for the baseball team at school this year? Yeah, I'm going out for shortstop. You are? Uh-huh. Well, I bet you'll be a whiz. Who are you picking in the National League? Floyd, will you hurry it up a little? I've got an important engagement this afternoon. Okay, just having a little man-to-man -man talk. Say, you're kind of dressed up today, Leroy. Where are you going? Well... If you must know, Floyd, Leroy is making a little social call. What? Yes, on one of his little girlfriends. Girlfriend? Starting out a little early, ain't you, Leroy? <laughs> it wasn't my idea. Unc made me do it. Oh, I thought so. No, Leroy. It's none of my business, Commish, but ain't you rushing the kid a little? Floyd. He'll have plenty of time for dames later on. Why don't you just let him be a boy for a while? Yeah. You keep out of this, Leroy. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid his age. Then was the carefree days, all right. Whenever I felt like it, I used to take off and go swimming and fishing. Now I can't even go to the corner for a paper without getting an okay from Lovey. <laughs> that has nothing to do with... What do you me? want to bother him with dames for? Look how happy the kid is now. Not a gray hair in his head. Floyd. I don't want to have gray hair. For heaven's sake. You're only young once, Kamish. Don't take away his childhood. Who's taking away? I want my childhood. I... <laughs> take my advice, Leroy. Don't let him make an old man out of you. Say a kid. Blessings on thee, little man. Oh, Barefoot good. boy with cheek of tan. I want to say a kid. Leroy. With your turned up pantaloons. Floyd. And your merry... Oh, I give up. <laughs> well, Helen... I'm glad your mother let you come over this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. I'm sure Leroy will enjoy it, too. Won't you, Leroy? Leroy? Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. After you, Helen. Thank you. Let me have your little coats. I'll hang them up. You two go on in the living room. We'll just have a jolly time. All right. Come on, Leroy. What's the matter with that boy? He didn't open his mouth all the way over here. See what a clam bake this is going to be. <laughs> Why did I... Well, children, having a good time? Why don't you both sit down? Make yourself at home, Helen. I will, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, what do you two want to do? Should we play games? Well... I know. How about Lotto? That's an exciting game. Well, if Leroy wants to... That's a sissy game. Yes. <laughs> well... We could play hide-and-go-seek. I'll be it. That's no fun in the house. In the house, no. Well, what do you want to do, Leroy? I don't know. Oh, dear. Say, I'll bet Helen like to hear you play the piano, Leroy. Oh, Wonk, I don't know any pieces. I spent a small fortune on piano lessons for you. You ought to be able to play something. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, if he doesn't want to Nonsense. play... Nonsense. He loves to play. Leroy, how about that little piece by Bach? I need more practice on that. You've practiced it enough. Now, go on, Leroy. Oh. He plays lovely, Helen. Has a beautiful touch. Leroy, maybe you do need a little more practice. Leroy! Leroy, get away from that piano. <laughs> Yeah, 
you were right. <laughs> well, what do we do now? Oh, Helen, maybe you'd like to look through our family album. Uh, all right. It's on a table here. Some cute pictures of Leroy in here when he was a baby. <laughs> oh. Look here, Helen. Here's one when he was only two years old. Didn't he have beautiful curls? Oh, curls. Why, he looks funny. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't he? Looks almost like a girl. <laughs> Leroy, where are you going? I'm going up to my room. No, you're not. You come back here. I don't want to. I guess this isn't much fun for Leroy. Maybe you better take me home now, Mr. Gildersleeve. Home? Well, all right. I'm sorry, Helen. It turned out this way. That's all right. Uh, Leroy? Yeah? I- I'm sorry I didn't get to see you do your magic act. Huh? The kids at school said you were a keen magician. Well, not so bad, I guess. <laughs> they said you were wonderful. Well, I can do a few tricks pretty good. <laughs> well, I, I hope I get to see him sometime. Bye, Leroy. Uh, hello. Yes, Leroy? I guess I could do one of my tricks now if you wanted me to. <laughs> oh, would you? Well, if you wanted me to. <laughs> Don't go away. Hold your way here. I'll get my Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> Women are smarter than men, even at that age. What did you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? I said, have you seen this page? <laughs> <laughs> That was a swell trick, Leroy. Yeah, we call that the Japanese hoop trick. A little thing I picked up during my travels in the Orient. <laughs> Leroy, don't you think you've done enough? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have here a deck of cards. Just an ordinary deck. Leroy. Yeah? It's getting awfully late, my boy. I'm sure Helen has seen enough of your tricks. So why don't you take off that blue turban and we'll drive her home? <laughs> Gee, I haven't got to the best ones yet. But Helen probably has to get home. Oh, don't worry about me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mother said I could stay here all afternoon until 6 o'clock. She, she did? <laughs> I'd better make a phone call. Excuse me. <laughs> now, if you will watch closely, I will take the cards in one hand and my magic wand in the other. Oh, brother. So oh, bad line will understand if I'm a little late. Hello, Adeline. Uh, this is Clark Martin. Ha. Huh? Well, I was thinking of you all, too. Sure enough. <laughs> Hope you don't mind if I'm a little late for tea this afternoon. I'll be detained for a little while. What's that? The tea is getting cold? Uh, well, I'll hurry. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Adeline. No, oh, putting your magic set away, Leroy? Yeah. Good. Well, let's put on our little coats and we'll drive Helen home. Unc. Yes? Helen and me just had an idea. Yeah. What's that? Will you take us down to Peavy's for a soda? Soda? But, Leroy, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. It'll always take a minute. But Helen's thirsty. But and she's our guest. Um, well, all right. Helen's thirsty. I think you've hit the bottom there, Leroy. <laughs> yeah. How did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, infants. You've had two sodas now. Shall we go? Uh, Unc. What is it now, Leroy? Helen would like to go to the movies this afternoon. What? Wouldn't you, Helen? But, Leroy, I told you I have an engagement. Well, your idea. You said you wanted me to get acquainted with this. You know. I know, but... You said you didn't want me to grow up and live in a cave. Live in a cave? You wouldn't want me to do that. Okay, Leroy, I'll go. But just a minute. I better call Adeline again. <laughs> Hey, Tex, which way did them cattle rustlers go? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I didn't see them. Oh? <laughs> Gee, this is a thrill picture, isn't it, Helen? Oh, yes, it is, Leroy. It's awful. Come on, Tex. Let's hightail it after them vomits. No, you fellas go on ahead, Cactus. Reckon I'll just sit here for a spell and play on my trusty old guitar. Oh, is he going to sing again? I'm a leaving San Bernardino so, so long, old time. 
He looks like a pal of me. Leroy, haven't you had enough of this? As he died. And he left an empty saddle. Good. When he went to herding cattle. Herding cattle, that's what he ought to be doing now. Across the great divide. I'll be back in a minute, Leroy. I gotta make a phone call. Long, old pal. Where the fellas come from? Excuse me. Let me out, please. So long yourself. Oh. Calls himself a singer. Popcorn, sir? Ten cents a bag. No, thanks. Is there a phone here in the lobby, miss? Phone? Yes, sir. Right over there. Popcorn? Ten cents a bag? Popcorn. Oh. Here's a telephone. Five o'clock. It's a tea party. <laughs> oh. Hello, Adeline. This is... But Adeline, I'm tied up. Had to go to the movies with Helen. No, she's a friend of Leroy's. But she's only 12 years old, Adeline. You're never going to speak to me? What? But Adeline... What? What? She hung up. Hi, huh? Leroy. Just come out to get some popcorn. <laughs> For Helen. You know what? Girls are really okay. That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back soon with something he particularly wants you to hear. Smooth and rich, so delicious you'll want to serve it to the kiddies as a treat. That's parquet margarine. It's the favorite spread for bread in millions of American homes. That fine, fresh flavor makes it the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Parquet is made from only choice products of American farms. And each delicious pound is fortified with 15,000 units of vitamin A. And just think, nourishing, delicious parquet costs less today than it did a year ago. It's the better buy for both bread and budget. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Friends, this is National 4-H Club Week. The Kraft Foods Company and the members of our cast send best wishes to this fine group of boys and girls. This year, the 4-H Club theme is creating better homes today for a more responsible citizenship tomorrow. 4-H Club members all over our country are making their homes places where love, cooperation, and the joys of wholesome living abound. Home, you know, is the first unit of society. And only when homes are what they should be can America be what it should be. Thank you, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Special material was by John Greenlee Puttier and Kay Burgess. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Cary Grant will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Treat the family to that good old American dish, macaroni and cheese, some night real soon. And remember, you can get all the makings in a single package called Kraft Dinner. You like the way that special macaroni cooks fluffy, light, and tender in only seven minutes. Then you just stir in the golden Kraft grated. The whole family will like the grand cheddar cheese flavor that's in every tempting forkful of Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese. Kraft Dinner is quick, easy, delicious, and economical. Each package makes four generous servings. So get several packages tomorrow. Remember the name. It's Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.